So why cats? I love cats. Millions of people love cats, particularly if you, have a, if you see a cat like this having a total comfort. It's the comfort issue that I'm interested in. Uh, as an architect, uh, I design houses for people to make them feel comfortable. So I decided to observe cats and uh, see whether I can uh, learn something more about comfort. I started to look at them, how they move around the space, how they inhabit the home. And what I realized is that uh, cats never pass the open space in the middle. For example, if we have a door opening, cat would never go through the middle. It would always go like this, sticking to one side. So, for example, if we have an intruder in a cat's private uh, space, uh, like a guest in a kitchen, for example, it uh, approaches the intruder, closely sticking to the uh, wall, like dragging his tail along the wall, just to make sure that uh, everything is fine, this, this, the house are, is still there and everything is under control. So in cases when, we, when cats lack the uh, spatial security, uh, they run. For example, you hardly can see a cat that walks across the street slowly. It's usually running or in a bit of a hurry at least. So I started thinking about humans, about people. How do we move around the city and uh, what can we do to make the city more comfortable? So I stood there on the, on the street and observed uh, people, and uh, I realized that we are just like cats. We use the street uh, as a transit zone from getting to one point to another, from one comfort zone home to another comfort zone uh, work. So this makes me ask, when was the last time when you stopped on the street? Or to be more specific, when was the last time when you stopped on the street voluntarily? Here's one uh, example when we stop on the street. It's a traffic light. Uh, so I started to search for others. And uh, one, uh, one, one, one obvious example is Park. This is where people used to hang out. So I extruded uh, the three crucial elements that make people stop and enjoy themselves. One is nature. You can see the couple mingling in the background. You could never see that happen on a pavement, for example. The other one is uh, infrastructure, the bench. It's much more easy to feel comfortable when you're seated. And the other one is friends. You hardly see people hanging out in the public space when they're alone. So you need friends, or at least a replacement of friend, for example, a book or a dog or a smartphone. So, and if we, if we have a, the chance to observe people, that's a bonus uh, for this place, because you know, it's just like TV. You like to watch at other people uh, being uncomfortable. So I was starting to wonder whether we can make the street, thinking uh, also about the city as a whole, uh, a destination rather than a transit zone. So I took the three crucial elements, the friends, the infrastructure, um, the benches. We found some nature on the street. So we started to, driven by this pure curiosity, starting to uh, try to make ourselves comfortable on the street. We, we did some things we'd usually do when we're comfortable. We set up a barbecue, had some fine, uh, wine, but you know, it felt a bit awkward to do, the, to do that on the street. And then we sort of realized that our heads uh, are full of taboos about what to do and what not to do in the public space. No pointing at, uh, with finger at people. It's impolite that what your mom uh, teaches you when you're little. No staring at people. Uh, no food. If you drop something on the ground, forget about eating again. Uh, it's, uh, it's a street. It's a dirty place. Uh, no alcohol. Uh, even if you want to have a meeting, gather larger groups of people, you have to permission uh, from um, the city council. So how can we possibly feel comfortable in these situation? Another question is, uh, is there enough space in a city? Uh, when we sit on a sidewalk, we disturb some pedestrians, so I start to wonder where, whether there is a space. So the winter came, I was still thinking about it, and um, uh, I noticed these uh, snow drifts on the sidewalks, and I was start wondering, why is this space used as a storage for half of the year? Uh, when it could be uh, used uh, otherwise, you know, it's an expensive space in a city center. Another thing about, um, about snow, that it's a really a privilege to be an urban designer in the north, uh, because we don't need 
complicated devices, complicated tracking technology to see how people move around in the city. All we have to do is uh, take a look at the ground and uh, see the marks that are left by the people, uh, by different users of the city. For example, here, uh, the cars, yeah, they, they leave very clear uh, mark where, where, what, what territory they use. The pedestrians uh, leave very clear mark where, where, what's the space they're using. And the orange line shows the, the physical space, the side of the pavement. So this, this sort of shows that we are living in a, two parallel realities. One is the built environment that we use, and the other one is uh, how we actually use the city space. So this obviously tells me that there's something wrong with the design in our cities. So if we project the winter situation back on the summer situation, uh, this is what we get. The blue field indicates the the space that we can reclaim from, uh, from a car infrastructure without bothering the car infrastructure. So we have actually plenty of space for uh, bike lanes, for greenery, for infrastructure, for all kinds of things to happen in a city, dense city conditions. It's just a matter of how we organize it, how we, uh, if we have to look carefully at it and see what it tells. And the more we zoom out, the scarier it gets, uh, both from intersection uh, scale to uh, larger city scale to regional scale. And uh, here's one, uh, uh, one space, uh, which, we, which I wonder why we never question why it is the way it is. How did it get here? Um, here's, uh, we see well, how this space could be used, not particularly because we are a fan of tennis, but to show just the size of the space that is misused. You notice the green strip in the middle of the, in the road. That's the philosophy behind the simple countryside road that I am fascinated about, is that we should take and use only as much as we need and leave the rest for the nature or in case of, uh, in case of a city for people. Okay, so we got some ideas, we got some thoughts uh, how we should treat uh, our city. So how do we do that? Uh, the quite typical tool for it is uh, urban planning. So when you hear urban planning, what's the first image that pops up in your head? It's probably something like this. So when I was trying to search uh, for comfort in the city, I asked myself, what does my feeling of comfort has to do with this kind of image? This is, uh, these images uh, have, have been predominating in, a, in the media space uh, when we talk about the future of the, our cities. So if you want to really talk about the future of our cities, you have to start doing it from the street level. Uh, because that's where the people are, that's where the, our final clients are, the, the, the ones who will be using that space. And uh, we should do it not only in a form of exhibition where there is a static proposal and a viewer, but there is very, it's very important to have this uh, talking to people to explain the ideas, to, to understand problems in detail, what are those uh, there on the ground. because. If we built the environment around human needs instead of uh, building environment and then placing humans there to live, uh, it's more likely that it will, be, uh, it will last longer, it will be sustainable, it will be used by the people. So we started to experiment uh, these forms of communications. How could we do, do this? Uh, one of this is an architecture office that we set up in our streets and just asked people to come and, and uh, listen to their stories and try to, try to understand uh, their perception about the city. We even put out a house specially designed for, um, for gathering people, uh, designers, architects, politicians, decision makers, to sort of point out the, there's something wrong with the city. We, we have to think about it more and, and uh, make it happen in uh, up, uh, higher levels where the decisions are made. So we're not cats 
in space, we're humans in space. And uh, we believe that it is possible to feel the comfort in the cities and to make, to make it a place where to grow rather than to stop for a second to earn money and then escape back to the suburbs or countryside. So finally, why, why are we doing this? Why, why provoke? Why try to mingle? Uh, why, try to, why bother talking with strangers? And um, I happened to study in this one architectural school, and um, there was this professor who said, there are three things that you have to do in order to pass my uh, course. The first one is attend my lectures, obviously. Uh, the second one is uh, don't necessarily agree with everything I say. And the third one is uh, attend school Thursday bars. That is the place where you will learn the most. So that's, that's the power of diversity for me. Thank you.